no water in for you, my friend. What country is this, friend? This is Illyria, lady. What am I supposed to do in Illyria? We're brothers in heaven. Or maybe there's a chance he didn't drown. What do you think, Sam? It was a total fluke that you yourself survived. Oh, my poor brother. But perchance by some fluke, he was saved too. It's possible, ma'am. Don't give up yet. When our ship was wrecked, you and a few other survivors were clinging onto our lifeboat. I saw your brother tie himself to a big mast floating in the sea. He was acting courageously and resourcefully in a dangerous situation. For as long as I could see him, he stayed afloat on the waves. Thank you for saying that. I wish I had some money to express my gratitude. But I survived, and it gives me a reason to imagine that he survived too. And what you say gives me a reason to hope for the best. Do you know this area where I am? Yes, I do. I was born and raised less than three hours from here. Who's the ruler here? A duke who is noble in name and character. What's his name? Orsino. Orsino? I've heard my father mention him before. He was a bachelor then. He's still a bachelor. Or at least he was a month ago when I left. But there's a rumor, you know. People always talk about royalty. They say that he's in love with the beautiful Olivia. Who's she? She is a victorious young woman, the daughter of a count who died a year ago. She was in custody of her brother, but he died too. I wish I could work for that lady. It'd be a good way to hide myself from the world until the time was right to reveal my identity. That would be hard though. They say she's over men in memory of her brother. Captain, now please, and I'll pay you plenty for this. Help me conceal my identity. Help me find the right disguise until the time is right to reveal myself. Now you can introduce me to this. And yeah, you, know, you won't be wasting your time because I really can sing and talk to him about many different kinds of music, so he'll be happy to have me at his service. Please, just keep quiet about what I'm trying to do. What well, only time will tell what will happen after that. I will keep your secret. I swear on my life, I won't tell anybody. Thank you. Now show me the way. If music be the food of love, Payan! Give me access of it, that the fading, the appetite may sicken and soon die. It had but a dying fall. It came over my ear. The sweet sound that plays along a bank of violence, giving and stealing odor. Enough! No more! Tis not so sweet now as it was before. Oh, spirit of love, how fresh and quick art thou. Do you want to go hunting, my lord? For what, Kirio? The heart. Why, so I do. Except, when my eyes first did see Olivia, we thought she cleared the air of all pestilence. And in that moment, I was turned into a heart. And my desires, like fell in cruel hounds, ever since did pursue me. <clears throat> oh, how now? What news do you have of her? I'm sorry, but they wouldn't let me in. But I got the following answer from her handmaiden. Olivia's not going to show her face for the next seven years, not even to the sky itself. Instead, she will go around, veiled like a nun, and once a day water her chamber with tears. She's doing this out of love for her dead brother, whom she wants to keep alive in her memory forever. Oh, she that hath a fine frame. To think, if she loves her brother this much, how much will she love me when I finally win her over and make her forget all other attachments? Take me to the garden. I must find a beautiful place to sit and think about love. Yeah. What? Yes, yes my lord. lord. to the toast of my niece, and as long as there's a hole in my throat and booze to be drunk, I will continue doing so. And anyone who doesn't drink to my niece is scum. Oh, shut up, no one cares. Speak of the devil, Sir Andrew. Ah, Madam Toby, how are you doing, Madam Toby? Ah, oh, sweet Sir Andrew. Yeah, hello to you, my little bastard. 
Hello, sir. Oh, Acosta, Andrew, Acosta. Oh, um, good Madame Acosta. I'd love to make your acquaintance. My name is Maria Kirk. Ah, good Madame Maria Acosta. No, no, when I said Acosta, I wasn't referring to her name. I was telling you to go after her. Woo oh. her. Confront her. Good heavens, I'll never do that in front of all these people. That is what Acosta means, right? <laughs> Goodbye, gentlemen. You're letting your go that easy. If you do, you don't deserve your sword. Ah, but I will! My hand, my fair lady. A <laughs> lady has a right to her own opinion. You should take your sword bar and put a drink in it. Uh, but there's no meaning in this! <laughs> well, your hand looks empty, sir, so you should put a drink in it. Oh! <laughs> I'm not such an idiot as to not be able to keep my hand dry! <laughs> well, I don't get it. What's the joke? It's just a bit of my dry humor, sir. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> Are you always this funny? Yes, I have a handful of jokes. But unfortunately, when I let go of your hand, I let go of the biggest one. <laughs> you need a drink, sir. More importantly, I need a drink. Let's see here. You can find something on the table. Something on the table. Let's put it in. Perfect. I mean, have you ever been rejected that badly? <laughs> <laughs> Never. The last, the last time I've been that far down, I've jumped myself under the table! <laughs> well, tomorrow I'm going home, Sir Toby. Pourquoi, my good friend? Pourquoi? What does that mean? Does that mean I will or I won't? <sighs> God, I wish I'd studied more languages. Much like I have fencing or dancing or even bear baiting. <sighs> if only I'd been schooled more. Well, regardless, I'm going home tomorrow, Sir Toby. Uh, I've tried been trying to see your daughter, and even your chances are ten in one. Even if she, even if I go see her, she won't want to see me. Even the duke over yonder is having trouble courting her. Uh, she doesn't want the duke. She doesn't want to marry anyone of higher social status, or who is prettier, or older, or smarter. You have as much a chance as anyone, man. Hmm. All right then. I'm staying one more day. <laughs> if the Duke keeps treating you so well, Cesario, he'll go far. He's only known you for three days and he's already treating you like a close friend. When you wonder why the hell keep treating me well, it makes me think his mood might change. Or else I'll mess up somehow. Is he a constant in his favors? No, not at all. Thanks for telling me that. Oh, here's the Duke now. Has anyone seen Cesario? I'm right here, my lord. At your service. Oh, good. Cesario, I need to have a word with you. The rest of you, please go away. I need some privacy. Now, Cesario, you know everything about me. I have shared the depths of my soul with you. So, please, go to her house. And if they don't let you in, Plant yourself outside and demand that you will not leave until they let you see her. But, my lord, if she's as depressed as people say she is, she'll never let me in. Then be clamorous and leave all civil bounds. Do whatever it takes to get the job done. Say, I do speak with her, my lord. What then? Oh, then unfold the passions of my love. Overwhelm her with examples of how faithful I am. It will be best for you to enact my love for her. She will attend to it much better in thy youth than to an older, more serious man. I don't think so, my lord. Oh, but it's true. Anyone that says you're a man must not realize how young you are. Your lips are smooth and red like the goddess Diana's. And your voice is like a little girl, soft and high. And the rest of you is pretty feminine, too. I know you are the right person for this job. You can take anyone you need. I must have privacy. If you accomplish this, all my riches will be yours. All right. I'll do my best to make your lady love you. But not a tough task. I have to go matchmaking for the man I want to marry myself. Oh, no, 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 you don't. Either you tell me where you've been, or I'm not going to make any excuses for the lady Olivia, okay? And guess what? She will have you executed. Let her execute me. She that is executed in this world shall fear no colors. And how do you know? He shall see none to fear. That is such a lame answer. 
Oh, and by the way, I know where you get all of your brave talk, but that's just because you're a fool working in this palace. Well, we all have our special gifts. Some of us are born wise, and those of us who are meant to be fools shall do what we do best. Still, she's going to kill you when she realizes you were gone so long. Or at least fire you, but wouldn't that be just as bad for you as being killed? Being killed is a good way to avoid getting married, and as far as being fired, it's summer, so being homeless wouldn't be that bad. Just shut up. You, you, here comes Lady Olivia. So if I were you, I'd come up with something good before she gets here. Please, let me think of something funny to say. Smart people who think they're witty often turn out to be fools, and I know I'm not witty, so I may pass for being smart. What did that philosopher say? Chronopolis. Ah, yes. A witty fool is better than a foolish wit. God bless thee, lady. Take the fool away. You heard a fellow. Take away the lady. You're such a boring fool. I want nothing to do with you. Madam, those are a couple character flaws that can be fixed by some booze and some common sense. If you give a sober man a drink and he drinks it, he will no longer be thirsty. If you tell a bad man to mend his wicked ways and he does, he will no longer be bad. If not, let the tailor mend him. Anything that's mended is only patched up. If a good person does something bad, they're patched up with sin. And if a bad person does something good, they're patched up with goodness. If this logic makes sense, great. If not, so be it. The lady said take away the fool, so I'm telling you again, take away the lady. I told them to take you away. Your mistake. I may look like a fool, but I am sharp. Please, let me prove to you that you are the fool. Can you do that? Easily, madam. Go ahead. Prove it. I'll need to ask you some questions. Please answer, my good little student. I'm only listening to you because I have nothing better to do. Why are you in mourning? Oh, because my brother died. <gasps> Don't. I believe that your brother's soul is in hell. His soul is in heaven! Then why would you be sad if his soul is in heaven? The lady said, take away the fool, take her away. Damn, I am good! What say you to that, Malvolio? Is he getting funnier? Yes, and he will keep getting funnier until he dies. Old age makes people funny. Uh, even wise men, but fools more than anybody. Well, then I hope that you are blessed with old age so you can be a more foolish fool. <laughs> I marvel that your ladyship takes delight at such a, a barren rascal. That is a stupid troublemaker and no more. Malfolio, your vanity is getting in the way of your good taste. If you were innocent, good-natured, and generous, maybe you wouldn't be so upset at what the fool says. He doesn't actually criticize people. He just makes fun. And wise people, although they, they don't make fun of people, all they do is criticize. Well, do you speak so wisely of us fools. I hope that the god of deception rewards you with being such a wonderful liar. Madam, there's a young gentleman at the gate who really wants to speak to you. Was he sent by Count Orsino? I don't know, madam. He's a good-looking young man and refuses to leave. Who is talking to him now? Sir Toby, madam. Your relative. Send Toby away. He speaks nothing but nonsense. A gentleman! A gentleman? What kind of gentleman? A gentleman at the gate. A simple. Good sir, Toby. How are you already so brain dead so early in the day? Brain death, bogus. I defy brain death. And there's a gentleman at the gate. Who's at the gate? Let him be the devil if he so pleases. God will protect me, so I don't care. Fool, tell me what a drunk is like. He's a fool, a madman, and a drunken man. The first drink makes him a fool, the second makes him crazy, and the third drowns him. Go take care of him. She's still only in the crazy phase. The fool will go take care of the drowned man. Madam, that young man swears he will speak with you. I told him you were sick, but he says he already knows that, and that's why he's come to speak with you. I told him you were asleep, and he says he knows that already as well, and therefore comes to speak with you. What is to be said to him? He has an answer for everything. Well, tell him he is not going to speak with me. I told him that already, milady. He says he will stand outside your door like a signpost or a bench until he speaks with you. What is he like? Just, he's just like a man like any other. But what is he like? 
He is very rude. He will speak with you whether you want to or not. How old is he? What does he look like? He is not old enough to be a man, yet not young enough to be a boy. He is like a bud before it becomes a pea pod, or like a little green apple before it's big and ripe. He is somewhere between boy and man. He is very handsome and speaks very well, but he is very young. He looks like he just stopped breastfeeding. Show him in. Call in my maid. Maria! Our lady wants you. Come, give me my mask. Put yours on too. Sit here. It is time to listen to Orsino's pleas again. Which one of you is the lady of the house? You can speak to me. I represent her. Ay, what an unnatural and exquisite beauty. Now, please, are you really lady of the house? For I would hate to waste my speech on the wrong person. See, it is very well written, and I put a lot of time and energy into memorizing it. But please, ladies, don't hurt me. For I am very sensitive, and even the slightest bit of rudeness can hurt my feelings. Where do you come from? See, I memorized what I was supposed to say, and that question was not part of the speech. Now, please, are you lady of the house? I am, unless I stole that roll. Well, if you are lady of the house, certainly it must be stolen. For what you give away cannot be kept for yourself. Now, please. Let me go on with my speech frequently so that I may get to the point. You can just get to the point. You can skip all the praising. I will let you get away with it. Well, that's too bad. It's very poetic. Well, then I guess it's fake. I would rather you skip to the point. I don't have time for lunacy, and I heard you were very rude outside my gate. That's the only reason I brought you in. I was curious. Not that I actually want to listen to you. I don't have time for ridiculous conversations. Will you be ready to set sail, sir? The door's right there. No, keep the boat docked here a little bit longer. Now, my lady, could you please tell your giant to back off of it? Tell me what you want. I want to deliver a message. A message? It must be a horrible message for how rudely you delivered it. It's about you. I come with no declarations of war or demands for cash. I do come in peace. You come in peace? For but why are you so rude? Who are you and what do you want? The only reason I was so rude by her is because of how, of how I was treated upon my arrival. Now, who I am and what I want is a secret that only you can know. It's safe to you. No one else can hear it. Well, then, let us be. I have a bigger secret to hear. What is this taking? Oh, sweet. Oh, sweet lady. Gentle king, what kind of holy scripture did you get your sermon from? Orsino taught. Orsino's heart! What chapter and verse of his heart? The table of, con of conscience says that it is the first chapter of Orsino's heart. Chapter one? I read that, it's heresy. Now, what else do you want to say? Wait, lady, please review your notes. Now, did your master give you negotiation to see my face? I think you're overstepping your bounds. Oh. I'll let you see the painting. I'll pull the curtain. This is what I look like in this current moment. It's a portrait. Do you like what you see? It was excellently done, if all natural. Oh, it is all natural, sir. Wind and rain cannot wash it away. That's true beauty, my lady. You'd be the cruelest woman in the world if you were not to pass down some of your beauty to your children so that future generations may enjoy it. I would never be that cruel. Perhaps I'll do as you say and let the future and the whole world enjoy my beauty. I'll inventory everything. For example, item two lips, ordinary red. Item two brown eyes, both lips. Item one neck, one chin, etc. Anyways, were you sent here just to tell me I am beautiful? I see what you're like. You're proud. Well, you'd still be just as gorgeous even if you were as proud as the devil himself. Now, I think you should return a love just as deep, even if you are the most beautiful woman in the world. I cannot love your lord. I know he's noble and 
wealthy and has a fine reputation and is poetic and is brave and is very handsome, but I cannot love him. He should have retired this a long time ago. I, I loved you as passionately and suffered in the same way you did. Your rejection would not make any sense to me. Well, what would you do? I built myself a sad little cabin near your house where my soul would be imprisoned. I'd call out for my soul. I write side write sad songs about unrequited love and sing them to you loudly in the middle of the night. I'd call your name out to the hills and echo it in the air. Olivia! Why? You wouldn't be able to go anywhere without feeling sorry for me. Not bad. You might accomplish something. Who are your parents? Well, I was born into a high ranking position, higher than what I have now, yet I am still fairly high ranking. I'm a gentleman. Go tell your lord I cannot love him. And tell him not to send any more messengers. Unless you come back. To tell me what he took of the news, of course. Goodbye. Oh, thank you for all your troubles. Hey, have fun. No, no, I am not. I am not a paid messenger. Keep your money. It is my lord who is not getting the reward he deserves. I hope you fall in love with a man whose heart is as hard as a rock and who makes a big joke out of your love, just as you have. Goodbye, my beautiful and cruel lady. Who are your parents? I'm a, I was born into a high rank. Higher than I have now, but I'm gentle. Oh, I'm sure you are. Your voice, your way of talking, your face, your body, your behavior, your sensitive soul, all prove that you're a gentleman. Stop, calm down. How strange I'm feeling. Can someone fall in love this quickly? It's like his perfection is seeping in my eyes like some sort of disease. Oh, well. Malvolio! At your service, madam. Malvolio, the Duke's servant, that obnoxious servant, go fetch him. He left me this ring and I, I want nothing to do with it. Perhaps he wants to get the Duke's hopes up, so please return it. I want nothing to do with it. Yes, madam. I don't know what I'm doing. Perhaps I'm letting my head take the best of me and falling for his good looks. Oh, well, we humans rely on fate. So, if fate is supposed to happen, just let it happen. Here I stand, head in hand, turn my face You won't to stay any wall. longer? And you don't want me to go with you? No, I'd rather you stay here. My stars shine darkly over me, and the malignancy of my fate might perhaps distemper yours. So, let me say goodbye to you now and face the evils alone. Otherwise, I wouldn't be thanking you so very much for all you've done for me. At least tell me where you're going. <laughs> Honestly, I can't. I'm just wandering without a particular destination. Though I know you'd never force me to tell you things I don't want to. So, I should be polite and tell you what I can. My name's Sebastian, though I've been calling myself Rodrigo. My father was Sebastian of Messaline. He's dead now. He left behind myself and my twin sister, who was born at the same hour as me. If God had been willing, we would have died in the same hour too. But you kept that from happening. An hour before you pulled me away from those breaking waves, my sister drowned. <laughs> though many people say she looked like me, she was considered beautiful. And though I can't believe what everyone says about her beauty, I'll be so bold as to say she had a beautiful mind. Even those who are jealous of her would have to admit that. She's drowned now in salty seawater. And now my salty tears are about to drown her memory all over again. I'm sorry I wasn't a better host for you, sir. Oh, Antonia, I'm sorry I caused you so much trouble. I care about you a lot, like a lot. Please let me be your servant so I can be with you. You'll be killing me if you don't. Oh, Antonia, it pains me to leave you. 
You are a good friend. I'm going to Count Ursino's court. Goodbye. I wish you all the best. If I didn't have so many enemies in Orsino's court, I'd go join you there. But who cares? I'm so crazy about you that danger doesn't bother me. I'll go anyways. Excuse me. Weren't you with Countess Olivia just now? Sir, this is as far as I've made it since I left her place. Walking at a moderate pace. She's sending this ring back to you. You should have saved me some trouble and taken it away yourself. She also wants you to make it very clear to your lord that she wants nothing to do with it, and to never send for him again, unless you wish to tell her how he reacts to the terrible news. Here, take the ring. She took it from me. I don't want it back. You threw it at her room. She wants you to have it back. If it's worth picking up and bending over to pick it up, there it is, on the ground, where you can see. If not, whoever finds it can have it. I didn't give her a ring. What's she trying to say? Oh, I hope she doesn't have a crush on me. Maybe this is why she sent that rude messenger so that I could come back. She couldn't do it herself, that'd be indiscreet. Oh, she loves me. I've been a while, Robert. <laughs> Come on, Sir Andrew, and for up past midnight, then we go to bed after midnight. So technically, we're going to bed early. And the doctors say that's good for your health. I don't know what the doctors say, but uh, stay up late to stay up late. Uh, false conclusion, I hate your logic as much as I hate empty drinking. Well, if we're up past the night, the wee hours of the morning, then technically we're up early. <laughs> Isn't it true what they say that we're made of the four elements, uh, water, earth, fire, and air? Well, that's what they say, but I think that life consists of food and foods. <laughs> You're a smart man. Let us eat and drink. Maria, bring us some wine! Oh, here's the fool! <laughs> mistress's house into a noisy bar? Is that why you're squealing these ridiculous vulgar songs without lowering your voices at all? Don't you have respect for anything? You respected the beat of the song, sir, so shut up! <laughs> sir, oh, I've got to be frank with you. My lady told me to tell you that while she allows you to stay in your house, in her house because you're a relative, she does not approve of this behavior. If you can shape up, you're welcome to stay in the house. <laughs> if not, and would prefer to leave, she is very willing to say goodbye to you. I'm driving in my car. 
this is how it's going. This. tonight, Sir Toby. Um, let me, Lady Livia's been upset ever since the Duke's messenger has come and visited her. And as for Monsieur Malvolio, <laughs> I'll take care of him. I'm gonna make him look like a fool and I'm gonna make him famous for his stupidity. <laughs> I know it's gonna work. Come on, tell us something about him. Tell us. Hmm. Sometimes he acts like a goody two shoot. I'll beat him for that. <laughs> going to beat him up for being good and what's your brilliant reason for that? Ah, expect the beat! <laughs> well, I don't have any brilliant reason, but I do have a good enough reason. Well, he's not really good or pure. Right? He's more of, he's a conceited flatterer. He's a pretentious guy who, who thinks he's so stuffed of wonderful qualities that everyone loves him. <laughs> but that's exactly the weakness I'm going to use to get revenge on him. What did you have in mind? Ooh, I'll put some love letters in his path and he's going to think that they're addressed to him because they'll describe the color of his clothes or the shape of his legs or the way that he speaks and I can make my handwriting look just like Lady Olivia's. I mean, sometimes we can't even tell the difference between our own. Sounds like you've got a lovely little trick in mind. I like it. I like it too. <laughs> He'll think that the letters are from Olivia and that she's in love with him. <laughs> and that's the idea. He's gonna look like such an idiot! Absolutely, you idiot. It's gonna be great. Well, I know it's gonna work. It's gonna be so fun and you guys, I'm gonna have you guys hide and the fool too, right where I'm gonna set the letter. And then we're gonna watch his reaction. One, two, break! She's upset, she's going off about something that Play some music, that one song that made me forget about my worries much more than the other music does. Just one verse. Sir, the person who should sing that song isn't here. Who was it? Bestie the Jester, my lord. <gasps> Olivia's father used to like her. She's somewhere else in the house. Then go find her! Oh, boy. If you ever fall in love and feel its bittersweet pain, I want you to think of me. Because the way I am now, unable to think of anything but the face of my love, is the way that all true lovers feel. But surely someone as young as you has fallen in love, haven't you? A little bit. What kind of woman was she? Why, she's a lot like you, sir. Oh, that, that won't do. But, uh, how old? About as old as you are, my lord. Now that definitely won't work. A woman should always marry an older man. That way, the woman can adjust to what the man wants, and the man will never lose faith. As much as we love to brag, we men change our minds far quicker than women do, and same with our desires. I think you're right, sir. Of course I'm right. Now, go find yourself a younger woman to love. Otherwise, you won't be able to keep your faith. Women are like roses. Just when their beauty is in full bloom, it begins to decay. That's true. Too bad their beauty fades right when it reaches perfection. Oh, my friend, please. Play us that song you played last night. Listen well, Tavaria. It tells the simple truth of innocent love. Are you ready, sir? Yes, please, play on. Well, I hope that I don't fall in love with you Cause falling in love 
service how may i help you yo hi guys okay um i have no idea get in your spot because he actually freaking believed it all right i'm on i'm on my way to you <laughs> wait what? i can't believe he actually said yes <laughs> i'm coming don't worry if i miss this let me be boiled alive
It's all luck. Everything's luck. Maria once told me Olivia was fond of me. In fact, I've almost heard her say that herself. She said, if she were interested in someone, it would be someone who looked like me. Besides, she treats me more respectfully than the other servants. What's the obvious conclusion from that? What an egomaniac! I swear, I'd like to beat that joke so hard. Be quiet. Just think, I could be Count Malvolio. <laughs> Oh, what a jerk. Shoot him, just shoot him. Shh, shh. After all, it wouldn't be the first time that kind of thing happened. Lady Strapke married her wardrobe manager. Damn him, the arrogant fool. Just think of me, having been married to her for three months, sitting around majestically. <laughs> what an idiot. If only I had a slingshot so I could hit him in the eye. Calling my servants together. Wearing an embroidered robe, having just come from a couch where I've left Olivia sleeping. <gasps> that does it. Then I'd put on a lofty and exalted expression, and I'd look around the room calling, and tell them that I know my place and I'd like them to know theirs. Then I'd tell them to go find my cousin Toby. That really does it. So we have to be quiet. I'd send seven of my servants to go find him, and while I'd wait, I'd frown impatiently or wind my watch or play with my, with some expensive piece of jewelry I happened to be wearing at the time. Uh, and Toby would approach me. He'd bow down to me. Are we going to let this guy live? Even if it's torture. And then I'd hold out my hand to him like this and put on a stern face instead of my usual friendly smile. And then I'd say to him, Cousin Toby, since I'm lucky enough to marry your niece, I have the right to say a few things to you. Oh yeah? Like what? You must stop being such a drunk. And then doesn't Toby punch you in the mouth? And you're wasting your time with that foolish knight. <laughs> That's me, I bet. <laughs> that Sir Andrew. I knew he was talking about me. Lots of people call me foolish. This'll get him. What's this? He's taking the bait! Shh. I hope he reads it out loud to make it funnier. My goodness! This is my lady's handwriting! This is how she writes her C's, her U's, and her T's, and that's how she makes her big P's! This is definitely her handwriting, no doubt about it. Her C's, her U's, and her T's? Why focus on that? To my dearest beloved, who does not know I love you, I send this letter with all my heart. Why, this is exactly how she talks. Excuse me, sealing wax. Wait, this is the seal that my lady stamps all her letters with. It has a picture of the crease on it. This letter is definitely from Olivia, but who's it written to? God knows I love someone, but who? I can't let my lips say his name. No man must know. No man must know, but... What comes next? The meter changes in her poem. No man must know. What if this someone was you, Malvolio? Go hang yourself, butler boy. Ah, uh, I may command the one I love, but silence, like a knife, cuts open my heart with strokes that draw no blood. M-O-A-I rules my life. What a pretentious riddle. That Maria has outdone herself. M O A I rules my life. Let me see, let me see, let me see. And look how willingly he's taking the bait. Well, I may command the one I love. Well, Lady Olivia commands me. I am her servant. She's my boss. Well, anyone can see what this means. There's no ambiguity to it. But the end, what do those letters mean? Only I could somehow relate them to me. Hmm, M O A I. Oh, bad dog, he's losing the scent. No, 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 be quiet, or we'll screw up the joke. Well, M, Malvo. Why, that's the first letter in my name. M, but then the next letter doesn't follow. A should come next, but instead O follows. Yeah, or I'll beat him up and make him yell O. 
And then I comes next. M O A I. Well, this code's not as easy to crack as the other ones. But if I shake it around a little bit, it will work because every one of those letters is in my name. But, oh, look, here's more prose after her poem. If this letter falls into your hands, think carefully about what it says. By my birth, I rank above you, but don't be afraid of my greatness. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. Your fate awaits you. Accept it in body and spirit. To get used to the life you'll most likely be leading soon, get rid of your low-class trappings. Show some eagerness for the new upscale lifestyle that's waiting for you. Argue with a relative like a noble, and be rude to servants. Talk about politics and affairs of state, and act free and independent. The woman who advises you to do this loves you. Remember the woman who complimented you on your gold pants and said she always wanted to see you with a mesh top. Remember her. Go ahead. A happy new life is there if you want it. If you don't want it, just keep acting like a lowly servant who's not brave enough to grab the happiness there before him. Goodbye. Signed, she who would be your servant. Fortunate, unhappy. <laughs> well, that does it. What? This is as clear as sunlight in an open field. I'll do it. I'll be vain and proud. I'll read up on politics. I'll be rude to Sir Toby and I'll get rid of my low class friends and I'll be the perfect man for her. And I know I'm not fooling myself or letting myself get carried away by my imagination because every clue here points to the fact that Lady Olivia loves me. <laughs> she did compliment me on my gold pants and said she liked the way the mesh top looked on me. That's her way of saying she loves me. Oh, I thank my lucky stars. I'm so happy. For her, I'll be strange and condescending and I'll put on my gold pants and mesh top right away. Thank God and my horoscope. What an idiot. <laughs> oh, here's a postscript. You must have figured out who I am. If you love me, let me know by smiling at me. You're so attractive when you smile. Please smile whenever you're near me, my dearest darling. Dear God, thank you. I'll do everything she tells me to. <laughs> I would have missed it for the world. Oh, I could marry you for thinking up of this. Okay. Could I kiss your feet? Oh, don't be weird. <laughs> but if you want to have some real fun, uh, we'll watch him the next time he's with the Lady Olivia. Oh my God. He's going to smile and she's going to be so upset with him. <laughs> Uh, I follow you to the gates of hell, you sneaky little devil! Come on. <laughs>